Load. This is the official video game podcast of Secret Friends Unite. This is round 118, and I am one of your hosts, Todd Oxtra. Uh, just broke my elliptical. I guess my wife thinks I'm the most studly man in the world because she was surprised that that machine ho- uh, stood up to my masculinity. So $300 uh, in a couple of weeks, and I'll be back on the elliptical. Wow. Joined by Mark, the Canadian Carabin. <laughs> How you doing? I, I haven't broken any gym equipment recently. Uh, Thor, um, that's, you know, <laughs> impressive. Good stuff. <laughs> um, and if you're watching on YouTube, I just flash some skin. So that's, I mean, it's not only fans, but I mean, it's <laughs> our, it's for our only fans. Um, so check that out when you get a chance on YouTube. Uh, joined by um, one of our good friends who often only has one hour to make one decision. And that is uh, Chris Johns from One Hour, One Decision. And, um, you know, basically a purveyor of a notebook for taking notes on your games. Chris. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Well, thanks for having me. Um, and I think this is like fairly recent. We we just did a show as well, right? Yeah, on your other other show, we uh, talked about uh, the Flash Avengers and the Flash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, nice. Hopefully, uh, this goes better than Flash's box office. <laughs> yes, we can hope so. Yes. Uh, well, very, very good. Uh, Chris, you've been on the show. So I think you know how this goes. Uh, surprisingly, you came back, which, you know, we're always surprised. Uh, you, you, you know, we, we get our up to and, you know, I trap everyone uh, with some of the antics I ensue. So uh, but people we have uh, entranced, Mark, are our Patreons. So, you know, we got to give them props. So go ahead. Take it away. All right. Well, I'm going to try not to screw this up because did I ever screw it up on Holocron last week? Uh, so I'm going to thank our best bud, Jamie Prinky. I'm going to thank our BFF tier, Sean, Stella, and Henry Nias, as well as Missy Merchant and Andy Milliken. Ha ha! Woohoo! Bonus it. points. Well done. Without screwing up a last name or a first name or both uh, <laughs> this time. Ha ha! Good for me. Um, If you're interested in the Patreon stuff that we're doing, you can get a free trial by heading over to patreon.com slash secretfriendsunite and signing up for a seven-day free trial so you can check out all the shows and all the goodness and all the stuff that's hiding there behind Patreon. Um, We are slowly releasing some of it, not all of it, but some of it to like the normal feeds, but you definitely get it first on Patreon and some stuff's a Patreon exclusive. So check it all out. My wife and I are planning on launching a new show very, very soon. Mm. And that's going to be really fun. I described it all on Holocron Chronicles last week. It has to do with movies and ratings, uh, specifically like PG 13 ratings and allowing a certain number of curse words and where we'd put them for maximum hilarity and impact. Um, so I think it's going to be a good show. She's excited about it, which is, um, it's fun to have her excited about like podcasting and doing something like that. We're still trying to figure out how to do that. So if any of the Patreon listeners or any other listeners have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I was thinking about potentially opening it up to a discord channel, doing an audio only show and having as many people jump in as possible at the start of the recording or whatever, and uh, just coming in and saying like, here's where I think the F word should go in Lord of the Rings. And, uh, (laughs) and just going from there and having like a big round table discussion with the community. So if you think that's a good idea, or if you think I should have it more structured, let me know because we're still in the planning stages, but it's also going to be happening very, very soon. We were talking about this weekend and uh, yeah, we're, we, we were itching to record the first, uh, the first take at it. So there we go. Um, thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. Um, you guys, you guys make us come up with these crazy new show ideas and it's, it's really fun and exciting. Yeah. And, uh, I launched my new show fan splitting, uh, that dropped about a week ago with, uh, tricky Kappa. Definitely check out the video on that one. Uh, you get a preview. If you go to Patreon, you get like, a, I think it's a two minute video preview. You can see, just check that out or with the trial and he's a VTuber. So it's kind of unique. He looks like, I told me he looks like Count Duckula, uh, <laughs> if he had a son and we talked about all about, his, uh, Tricky's fantastic love of transformers uh you know what got him into it what of his favorite things within the franchise are we even talked about rise of the beast and i've got episode two coming out a little preview uh it's going now so donnie reese is going to join me we're going to talk about his love of cars 
like he cool. being a car fan yeah. and it's like what's it's all about because he's big into that he does all this i like cars but i don't have that obsession where i actually buy classic cars get them redone so i want to hear all about and there's going to be some fun discussions about cars real and also fictional so that is going to mm-hmm. come out in a couple weeks as well awesome sounds awesome um, something that's probably less awesome, but I love it to pieces. Um, I think Mark secretly loves it, but um, his 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 uh, face when we do this often doesn't reflect that. But you know what? Sometimes. It's a lot of fun. We always have a good time. So that's buy, rent, return. It's like going to your blockbuster and then making a selection. Did you pick a good selection that you want to buy? You know, you get like you know ten bucks, you get to keep it, or did you just want to? just check that movie out once or that game out once or is it a game you made a bad decision and you're like mom and dad take this back i want to see if i can get a refund and that's where buy rent return comes in we go to our blockbuster and uh we make those decisions and this week i picked collections so if you talk about collections not collector's editions but collections as it's a uh disc a cartridge whatever with a variety of games from a series or from a platform And we've gotten many different versions of this over the years. So I picked three. And I think they kind of highlight many different things. Uh, The one thing I would say that's missing is Sony is missing from this list because they don't really do these um, very often. So that's kind of a big miss on their part. Uh, But with that, we've got uh, some recent ones and some older ones. So we've got Super Mario 3D All-Stars. This is the uh year of mario where apparently you can no longer get this game collection which was the 3d mario so it was uh it was i believe mario 64 it was mario sunshine and the first mario galaxy all playable on your switch uh digital or on cartridge we got sega genesis classics this is 50 of probably the only games you ever need to play on Genesis available on a cartridge or disc available on all the systems. It's available there. It's very affordable. And uh, they went deep into this game by doing a really cool, like you, it's almost like you're set up in your, your, um, your bedroom as a kid with your old TV, the the cartridge boxes, it, and it's really well done in regards to the way they present those games. And then last is Rare Replay, which came out on uh, Xbox One, and this was rare basically getting 30 games from their past history and they also did some meta games in it where you had to play so long with all the games it would lock other games and they even recently added if you own this uh goldeneye to that collection so they even made it better and it's very cheap and it's available on uh, game pass so those are our selections gentlemen so chris what do you choose Oh, um, I would probably buy the Sega Genesis Classics just because I know I'm a big fan. The fact that it has all the Street of Rage games in it and and uh, Vector Man on it, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sold there. Yeah. Uh, I'd probably, well, I don't know. I, I own Rare Replay, but... I'd probably rent it, and uh, I'd return Super Mario 3D All Stars because I'm not, I'm not that big of a, a a Mario fan. I respect it for what it's done for the for the industry and for the 3D platformers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I just I, I never really got into the Mario games, so sorry. That's fair. Sorry. So Chris, you're making Mark cry. I can see the coming down his face. I'm gonna make him cry in two seconds. Ooh, it's okay. You gotta love it. All that's right, fine. it's on like Donkey Kong, who is not in the collection. Uh, so maybe that's a sticking <laughs> point too. So, Mark, your choice. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna return uh, the Sega Genesis Classics collection Ooh. because to me, and it's it's the exact same reason, just kind of flipped on on its on its head. Um, for me, the Sega Genesis games don't bring back a lot of nostalgia. I didn't play a lot of them. Vector Man, I loved. Uh, the Sonic the Hedgehog games, I loved. But, you know, like this, and, and I appreciate And for the record, I own all three of these. So it's bye, bye, bye for me. Doesn't matter. But in this little fantasy scenario that Todd makes us do, um, <laughs> I have to, you know, obey his laws. So I'm going to return that one. Just because that's the least amount of nostalgia that I have for one of these collections. I was a Nintendo kid growing up, still kind of a Nintendo kid at heart. And um, I I appreciate the Sega games. I appreciate the collection. I loved playing this, but it doesn't have that same nostalgia factor. Uh, Rare Replay is going to be 
my rent because however many games are on there, like the first half of it, same kind of reason, like from like Jetpack to let's say, I don't know, Snake Rattle and Roll. Like that's kind of like Snake Rattle and Roll is kind of where I like picked up on Rare. So like there's a lot of stuff back to the 80s and I'm like, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> and then like, but like Snake Rattle and Roll, Bot- Battletoads, um, Killer Instinct, Blast Corp. Like once you get into the N64 stuff, then it was like Rare could poop in a bucket and it would sell 10 million copies. And you get like Jet Force Gemini, which was one of my favorite games. Uh, Banjo-Kazooie, Perfect Dark, hell yes. Uh, Banjo-Tooie, Conker's Bad Fur Day, which was so weird and crazy uh even like once once they moved over to xbox you get stuff like cameo perfect dark zero viva pinata um and like you, you know like weird stuff like jet uh banjo kazooie nuts and bolts and that kind of stuff and like is you it said grabbed by the ghoulies on that thing yes it is uh yeah oh yeah it is grabbed by the ghoulies it is i uh, i just brought up a list there yeah uh so for like Jet Force Gemini and Goldeneye alone, the Battletoads games, like that was that was my childhood right there. So I, I've got to pick that one. Um, that was close to my buy, but I I'm such a huge Mario fan that uh, if you give me Mario sixty four and Mario Galaxy in anything, that's gonna be like hitting it for me, right? Uh, Throw in Mario Sunshine, and you've got a knockout. I, I still hate that this was like a timed limited kind of release because why? Why? Just why? Sorry, all those Switch owners that bought Switches like six <laughs> months too late. You're screwed. And I, and I know you can play Super Mario 64 now, regardless of yes. whether you have this collection or not. And I'm hoping they eventually rolled out the other two games. But um, this this was, it was a pretty bare bones collection, but it's still, this was like the games that I wanted. So like, this and Rare Replay, I have to say Rare Replay felt weird with a, uh, an Xbox controller. If mm. if Rare Replay was on the Switch, it would easily be my top choice here mm. because I want to play most of those games with a Super Nintendo or more specifically... Your N64, N64 controller. Yes. Playing Banjo-Kazooie on an Xbox controller is just broken. It does really? Not feel right because, yeah, because Banjo-Kazooie mapped a lot of the attacks and stuff to those C buttons. It didn't use it for camera. So a lot Uh of your moves, a lot of the, the way that whole game was mapped and how it played was specifically based on having uh, a B C the four C buttons and the, the, the bumpers like modern day controllers just don't have that many buttons. So then you start relying on like, you know, hold this and press this or hold this and tap that or like press up on a stick or do like just stupid Mm. shit that they have to compensate for the lack of, you know, six face buttons and then all the triggers. Like it just, it it doesn't translate well. Uh, Jet Force Gemini kind of did a little bit. They they redid those controls, I believe. And they redid those. Yeah. yeah. Um, So it's just a lot of the stuff that I'm nostalgic, nostalgic for doesn't, play really well without an n64 controller you can get it and you can get that little hit of like oh i remember this it just doesn't feel right and that's what i loved about the the 3d all-stars collection is i have a gamecube controller i have a 64 controller all for my switch and it works so um that that gave it that slight edge but the second microsoft's like yeah we'll play nice here's rare replay for the switch <laughs> number one yeah the one thing i will say as a collector uh, maybe 3D All Stars might be a good one to have to buy. Right. Because yes, yeah. it's going to be like it's going to go through the roof because Nintendo just yeah, it's, it's not even available digitally. I mean, if it's it, crazy, that's, that's yeah, that's I just thing, looked at you know, Amazon. Yeah. It's like they just so completely weird. pulled it. It's like wow, yep. okay. so weird. Todd, what about you? So um, I'm going to get a little weird here. I'm going to I'm going to buy Rare Replay uh, cool. because I liked the collection. And the way they managed it, and I think it's one of the best collections we've seen, the mm-hmm. documentaries, all of the extra things they did with Care and the price they launched it at and all of the meta games they played. Like, they wanted you to play some games. And how do you get people to play, like, those old arms? I, I got, I mean, what is it, Amiga? I'm trying to remember the old the Zed Spectrum or whatever they did in the UK. They had Because they didn't have the NES really in the UK. They had mm-hmm. computers and different things. So they mm-hmm. that's a way they got people to play these games because if you played enough, you unlocked certain things. 
which was cool. It was a kind of a meta game, and they loved that. And they had uh, documentary features, they had uh, documentation, and it was cool. It was like handling here. That's what you want with the collection. You want more than just playing those games. You want extra things to put you in that mood of, wow, this is amazing. Gave you some kind of uh, a view of that. So that would be my buy. Um, and counterpart, counterpoint to you, Mark, I didn't own it in 64, so I don't have the context that I needed that control in the way they did it. I played Banjo on the 360. It looked wonderful. It played great. I don't think I could play it with an N64 controller. <laughs> so that's where I'm like glad they put the care in loving it. And they put they updated Jet, Jet Force Gemini as well. So I like the fact that they did all these extra things to make it like, wow, this is playable. So um, and it's really cool. And, it, and once again, they added GoldenEye after the fact if you owned it. So that's like value and they care for their 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 audience. That's really cool. Um, and they did a lot with that that um, GoldenEye uh, port as well. They didn't make you go through 25 steps to map it and make it successful. So Sega Genesis Classics would be the one I would rent because I rented Genesis consoles and games when I was in high school because I didn't own it. So I would treat it like I treated it. Um, I didn't ever get to play a game. So I would go into these games, play it for a little bit, and then have to take it back. So, um, But there's some great classics. And once again, the way they brought this collection together, the way they presented it with all of the love and care, and with 50 games, um, it's amazing. There's just so much there. And Sega was like the PlayStation at the time where they were like, we're going to do everything. We're going to like, you like fighting games, you like football, you like all these crazy things, RPGs. It's all there. Um, mileage may vary whether the games are good or not, but you know, it is, <laughs> but it was still fun. Um, and then uh, returning Super Mario 3D All Stars, actually, I loaned this to a friend of ours, his, their, their young son, uh, because he's never played these games before, which so it's kind of cool he can. But I thought, oh, I'm going to finally play Super um, Mario 64. I'm going to finally get into this, play this game. I'm like, and I hated the experience because it doesn't feel like you're playing a modern platformer. It still feels like it's, it's struggling with some of those things. Even at the time, it was fantastic. And they used the camera as like a, a thing, like you're almost starting a thing. It just, for me, doesn't work at all. I, I, I just can't. So I want a remaster or a remake of that game not a port that's prettier. And that's exactly what they did with these games. They made them prettier. They did some things so you could still use some different controls. But that's essentially what they did. They didn't add a lot of things to make this really cool and introspective. Like a Miyamoto documentary on this would be amazing. Yeah. But yeah. nope. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. It's like I, it's it's not because these are these are some of the best games of all time, like Galaxy and, uh, and Sunshine I love. Mm -hmm. But they needed a little more care and love, especially when they made them limited edition, like limited, uh, limited yeah. editions. So because they did another collection, which if you owned, if you were a subscriber to Nintendo Power, you could get the Zelda collection um, oh, no. for GameCube. And it was so cool to get all of these Zelda games literally cheap. And if you own that disc still, it's like six hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, I sold surprised. it. Oh, you had oh, it. Oh, wow. I had it. Did you amazing. sell it for six hundred dollars, or do you have regrets? No, no, Mark. It was a GameCube trade, or it was a GameStop trade, I believe. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know why I was like buying something else. So, oh well, oh well. Uh, well, that is it. Let us uh, know, folks. Six hundred buttons from yeah. some GameStop yes. employee's pocket. The time. Exactly. It, it, mistakes were made, folks. I'm 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 a man of mistakes, and I, I learn from them. Hopefully, most times I don't. So. Um, <laughs> And, you know, Edward Varnell, he did come in and say, uh, as you would expect, he bought the Mario collection. Uh, he was returning the uh, Rare Replay and he was uh, renting the Genesis collection. He defends himself as most people do. Well, I own them all. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Schloss Ritter on, uh, on Discord also buy Mario, uh, rent Rare and return Sega. Didn't give any reasonings behind it, just dropped those and took off. So, uh, Schloss, thank you. You ought to know, I guess, is what he's telling us. You should know why. Oh, well. <laughs> um, well, let us know, folks, if you have your thoughts on these. Uh, this is always a good time, because we're going to talk about collections on the back end of the show in the bonus round. We're going to talk about the collections we really want and how we want them to be. Uh, so with that, though, we got to get into what we've been playing. Uh, my goodness, uh, you know, I think we're finally getting past the uh, 
Tears of the Kingdom, like spend like two or three months. So, pe- oh, maybe not, as Mark would say. <laughs> but we're getting more and more games as we go through this year. So hopefully we're going to get more experiences to enjoy uh, and go from there. So with that, Chris, what have you been gaming, man? Uh, well, I am still uh, working my way through Diablo 4. It is, uh, it's been a good time. Uh, kind of a bit of a lull right now because waiting for season one to, to kick in. But in the meantime, I've actually jumped back into Yakuza Like a Dragon. And I have uh, been having a fantastic time with that game. It's so ridiculous. And so, uh, you know, I, I've, I've always kind of been hesitant about those games, like like turn-based games and, and in particular these games because they're so large and, and like daunting to put that kind of time into these kind of games. And I'm like, all right but uh it's it's been it's been a it's been i regret holding uh, waiting this long to play this game so uh but now now i'm playing and having a having a great old time so and actually oh oh sorry todd i was Uh, gonna say i played that game and i enjoyed it quite a bit but i felt like i didn't have enough i I wanted more i wanted to do more of the the battling and i felt like i was doing more of the story and interactions and things like that do they balance is that get better balanced or is it still uh, heavy on the story cutscenes for sure this is like i mean i feel like the yakuza games are are generally like you know 20 minutes of cutscenes and then maybe 10 minutes of gameplay but you know i've just i've just grown attached to the characters the characters are just are well done uh, at least in at least in like a dragon and stuff like that and um and yeah uh but also i, I forgot to write this down but uh i i did i did go go back to seafood because of you todd and uh i played i saw that they added a, a an arena mode so i thought that was kind of cool and um you know go through and and uh and they even have like a decent tutorial now too so you know i heard they added an easy mode too right added i yeah i think they definitely added an easy mode but i was just like you know let me see let me see how uh I can knock off some of the rust and play this again and the way it's supposed to be played. And I did okay, but you know, it could be better, but it's, this was, the, the, this was a fun addition because I, I think they're slowly releasing content for that, for that arena mode too. So it's available on Xbox now. I'm trying to remember it because it was originally yeah, a PlayStation actually. kind of pseudo yeah. exclusive. And, um, and, and Mark, I was telling Chris, I found on Amazon on Woot, uh, which I'm not sure if that's available in Canada or not, but Woot's been like their deal site for Amazon. And they've been doing all these uh, like uh, gaming deals, especially in collector's editions. So I got like the Ghostbusters collector's edition where it's a uh, Tobin spirit guide for like 20 bucks. Uh, it comes nice. with the game too, but uh, the Sifu, I said, like Chris was in, in Sifu. I'm like, they've got the Sifu Collector's Edition it was normally like a hundred bucks. It's like 20 yeah. bucks. So it, it doesn't come with the game, but it's got like the statue and all this cool stuff. Yeah, definitely, definitely grab that. So thank you for that also, Todd. Yeah. The Kawabunga Collection, if anybody wants that, is also available at a huge discount. It's like oh, 60 yeah. bucks now. It was 120. So if you want that game, that's where it was like, ooh. It's, it's available so um very cool and that they are we're getting like a pseudo sequel right with the, the main character right chris that that game they announced at um was it the xbox oh, showcase the, the yakuza oh yeah yeah, yeah. where I he's hi- hiding so. himself at the, at the it's like the austin powers at the <laughs> yeah. beach <laughs> yeah it, uh i i've yeah i don't know when it's supposed to come out but um excited and hopefully i can beat the game before this one comes out so okay. one more follow-up on uh diablo so you beat the game I did beat the campaign. Yeah. I am at this point because uh, the season starts on the 20th of July. I have to make sure I unlock all the altars of Lilith and, you know, just like that kind of stuff. So at least that progress transfers over to my seasonal character. So. And the season, from what I understand, you start from scratch and you have to roll a new character, right? Yep. Yep. You do it's have so to roll weird. a new character. It is. It's kind of weird, but I, I kind of like uh, I was, I was is watching. Is it freeing? Google. Is it freeing? Like you can no try way. something new. Yeah, you get to try something new, or you could just start over and just see. I mean, you can respec a character as is, but but um, in a way, I understand what their their philosophy was. It's like so people can try and uh, start like for people that are like that are jumping into Diablo uh, in 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 the beginning of a season with like their friends that have already had characters and stuff like that. Allows everyone to kind of level the playing field, so to speak, and then kind of play it together. So. I'm like, okay, I, I can accept that. And, um, you know, 
and especially if you have everything unlocked, it's it's like super easy to to level up fairly quickly. So, and what was your class? I was playing druid. Sweet, nice. It's, uh, it's a pretty difficult class to use. I, I was going to say I've heard I've heard that class is like a uh, uh, it's it's a. Um, Love it's a late, you really have to love the character because it's yeah. not exactly the easiest character to roll. It's a late, definitely a late game um, bloomer. So, you know, uh, but I mean, I, I'm starting to starting to like get to a particular point where my spec or my particular build is seems to be working. But I don't know. We'll see. Mark, have you gotten? Uh, have you con back to Diablo? I haven't. No, I was actually talking to a coworker about it today. Um, I really haven't been been touching my my xbox much at all um between zelda and uh just uh i'm I'm kind of back on my classic pokemon kick um so i'll jump in because that's all i've been playing so this is this is my seg part of the segment i guess um i've been really diving in finally to to tears of the kingdom after really not finding my footing with it whatsoever um and then finally kind of talking to my brother about it kind of getting hearing his stories about especially later game he's he's 240 250 hours in (laughs) collected everything going after like the the last remaining armor sets kind of thing um so talking to him about it without too much spoiler stuff but like getting into like motivations of you know to, to play the game uh and he understood when we talked about jedi survivor kind of how that mentally was just kind of played on my enjoyment of, of Zelda Um, Mm. because going into Zelda and like you start so high with, with Cal in, in Jedi survivor that, you know, you don't get knocked back. You don't get the usual Metroid uh, losing all your armor, your powers, this, that it's just like, here's where you were in the first game. Now let's take it higher. Um, So going back to Zelda and getting your ass handed to you and going back to three star or three hearts and like no weapons and you're naked in a cave somewhere. It's just like, Oh, come on, dude, I've done this. Frustrating. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I couldn't get mentally couldn't get past that. Now that I'm, you know, 15, 20 hours in or whatever I've put into it so far, beaten a couple of temples, explored a lot of the map, all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm really getting into it. I've got more hearts. I've got a little bit better weapons, some more parts that I'm fusing with weapons and that kind of stuff. And I'm really getting into it. And, um, yeah. And then, uh, I've, I've also, again, I've, I've gotten back into the old school Pokemon games on the, the Ambernick, uh, RG 35 XX. So I'm, I'm playing through those and, uh, and just really enjoying that. So this weekend I, I went out to the cottage for like the whole weekend and my brother came out Saturday night and was just like, Oh, let's see where you are when Je- in, with, with Zelda figuring that I'd bring my switch with me. Ah, I didn't. I just brought this <laughs> like old school gamer weekend. Let's like, gather around that three inch screen and play a game <laughs> together. <laughs> and I really, I hardly played it at all. It was so, such a nice, weekend. Funny. I was, uh, you know, um, that was it. So, um, yeah, so I haven't been putting much time into any kind of gaming, but, um, what I have, it's been Zelda and Pokemon. So that's, that's it. So I do definitely intend to get back into Di- Diablo four. Um, Again, have you played online about. with anybody yet, Mark? Because I, no. I was playing with Sean and we had a blast. And yeah. because the online part is kind of sucky because it, and obviously, Chris, you could you could be our Sherpa, but the leveling is kind of funky because if you're high level and I'm low level, it's not exactly great because it means that it doesn't it, 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 you play at your level and the enemies die at your level, but vice versa. But also the mainline qu- uh, quest um the person who starts it gets the progress. The people that join yeah. don't. So it's like yeah. better to do the side quests together because those really don't matter. They're fun. And there's a lot of leveling up you can do through there. So Mark, I would, I would recommend that. And if you want to, if you want to just ping me when you're ready to go in, man, I'll play with you and I'll just be Sounds dumb. Good. And uh, my necromancer, which if somebody can give me a good build in a necromancer, cause I feel like I'm not getting it and I'm frustrated. Cause I'm like, there's too many choices and I'm like, I don't know what's good. what's bad. And I'm like, I'm making some bad decisions and I'm rolling with it and I'm dying. So I'm like, I gotta be better than this. So, um, but, uh, yeah. And Mark, I was going to ask you another thing and Zelda, have you run into gloom hands yet? Yeah. Oh God. I was like, what the hell are those yeah. things? They're scary. Why are they coming after me? 
Yeah, not awesome. <laughs> the no, panic no. attack because I ran into them way too early. I didn't know what um, they were. And like Logan's, oh, yeah, those. I'm like, what? Yeah. It's so freaky. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. 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 Like, and they, do they permanently take away hearts or something? Uh, well, they're the gloom that can infect you. They hold you. And, um, I didn't and then get, once you I didn't be, get caught by it, I just saw it. And oh, just, I did. I don't want to yeah. mess with that. <laughs> well, and then once you beat them, then you essentially get like, I, well, I don't want to spoil anything if you don't know what happens after that. Um, but there's a surprise after Mark, which would be like, Oh, really? Okay. Really? <laughs> it's not like, it's not a good surprise. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like rain no, on your wedding one. day. It's, it's, a, it's Alanis I, Morissette basically oh. singing to you, uh, telling you that song. Um, but it's fun. And I will say this, my son being kind of my Sherpa and giving me hints and tricks and things like that has made Zelda more enjoyable along the way. Just like your brother telling you stories, I bet is there someone that can tell you with kind of like, Oh, and it's, it's great. I think it's a collaborative game without needing to play with a second player. Yeah. Well, very cool. Well, Mark, uh, my, just my RG 35, uh, just is still, still MIA. MIA. I don't know where the hell that thing is. If you ever find it, you need to attach like an air tag or something to I the back. So. Of you can trace <laughs> it's, it. It's like the ghoulies in Charlie's yeah, base yeah. or his recording area that keeps breaking up his figures. They're also stealing my, my handheld. So uh, yeah. hopefully I find that eventually because I was, I was wanting to play more with it. Uh, mm-hmm. So there you go. Um, so for me, um, everything went on hold with a game. I I'll be honest. I never expected this game to capture my attention. I'm like, but I'm going to try it anyways, because it's a big exclusive. And I've heard Final Fantasy 16 is essentially a fully brand new approach to Final Fantasy that we've never seen before. Final Fantasy, they, every time they have a new iteration, especially in the mainline versions, they do something different. And that has not always gone over well, but um, they don't hesitate to try to do new things. And 16 has been best described as Devil May Cry meets Game of Thrones. It's not a turn-based RPG. There's very little RPG about it. There's very little. There's there's more RPG in God of War. There's more. I mean, all these other games. And I'm like, and that works for me, but I don't know if it works for everybody else. But I love this because I would say I'm trying to say it's Devil May Cry, but meets The Witcher because mm-hmm. it does not have like it. It embraces the fantasy monsters demons magic and all this stuff like the witcher does um and it dwells into darker things like the witcher does um i typically say i don't like jrpg's storytelling because typically it's hammy it's overdone the reactions are way over it's it's melodramatic when you do it's like a telling of novella with with japanese voices <laughs> and it's like a little crazy at times like you're losing me. And it's just like, and even a lot of the um, translations, they're not localized. Well, it's like ultimately like this dialogue, it's like bad dialogue in a movie. Like you can write that, but having someone to say it, it's a bad idea. And it just comes <laughs> off clunky. Um, this, I don't know who localized this. This is amazing. Um, the actors they have are fantastic. And the, the, the facial capture and the emotions and things they have in these games it's awesome. I love this story. It's it's capturing me. And where I said about the Kusa, about like how much um, cutscenes and everything. There's a lot of cutscenes in this game, by the way, and there's a lot of um, quick time elements as well. Mm. But there's also a lot of combat too. So it's if you like action, stylish action, you're going to enjoy this game because it's very fun and they give you so many options. You do get a party with you and they can play along with you, um, and then you can make it as difficult as you want or as um, uh, simple as you want and more storytelling focused. It's great. They've added so many abilities to make it easy to come into. And if you just want more story, you can play it that way. If you want more difficult um, and reducing like the, the options to give it to make it um, like they have like a, a, a medallions you can wear that um, give you a heads up when you're going to get hit, which is great. They have it where you automatically apply like potions. They have another one where, uh, you can directly control your dog, which is the greatest dog in the world, it's named Torgal. He's awesome, and you can pet him. You can give him love, and he, you can power him up with that. It's great, and um, it's awesome. Even in the parties where they show your save state, they show your parties. They're all chibi eight bit or sixteen bit, like yeah. representations of your character. It's so great. I love it. There are very dire uh, themes in this. At one point, I'm like, I can't believe they just showed that because that's pretty 
heart wrenching and very violent. Um, so they they go to places, but in a way that's very mature and well done. Um, and I don't know how this long is this the game first is. mature game too, right? It feels like it. Um, I know they've done other things, but they've always <laughs> and it's funny because they said this is the first time Final Fantasy is like actually picked not tweens or teens that are over dramatic to be the lead. These the leads are in their thirties. Yeah. Um, and they play with time and mature with them, which is great. Um, they also don't use amnesia as a main thing. So it's great. So you don't have to deal with that. And um, I will give a shout out to one character in particular. His name is Sid. And Sid is a character that's in almost every Final Fantasy. But the actor they got to be in this, I believe, is a Game of Thrones actor. It's one of the He's, best performances I've ever seen before. I believe wow. it's the same voice actor as Lorath in Diablo 4. I could see it. He's got a British type accent, but he's got a very iconic Gravel. voice. Yeah. Like and voice, yeah. the way he's saying the dialogue, it just comes off as so compelling versus, you know, he's mailing it in or he's like, mm -hmm. oh, no, I just got a paycheck. So I, I really I don't know what to say about this game, but it dragged me away from Diablo 4 and Tears of the Kingdom. Don't know why. I have not played a Final Fantasy game to completion since seven. And I even tried remake, didn't get grab me. So this is something for me that just is really like wow. And I can't keep can't say enough about it. And our guest next week is also captivated. So we're probably gonna go a little bit deep on this, Mark. So you may have to watch some cutscenes or something. <laughs> so you're like, <laughs> what's happening? But there's Moogles too. And I'm like, what the hell is a Moogle doing here? And it's so it feels so out of context. You've got this cute little guy with a thing, and apparently you're the only one that can understand him. It's like the the dissonance with Final Fantasy at times is like Okay, I'm just along for the ride. But the chocobos, they are badass in this game. They are like war horses. And yeah. they've got their claws, and like that could beat the crap out of someone. So they've done a great job. Now, if Cat Sith shows up, a weird talking cat that's like the what's this, what's the uh Pokemon cat, Mark? Like a meowth. Like a meowth. That is Cat Sith. If Cat Sith shows up and like that, I'm like they're on crack, but I'm sure they'll have a fun <laughs> way to do it. So um, that is my time with Final Fantasy 16. I've probably got about 30 hours in it. I'm not sure how far I am. <laughs> so this um, is six-month PlayStation exclusivity. Any announcement yet of coming to different platforms? Anything solid? You, you know, it's going to be to PC next, I assume. Um, Remake has been a PlayStation exclusive, and there's still no word when that will come to other platforms. And that's been out since playstation 4 so i don't know and as we know playstation likes to get exclusives so i don't know if it ever will be coming mm -hmm. there even though xbox has got a good relationship with square enix i don't know uh and xbox could obviously outpay sony at any point they could put like here's a billion dollars for final fantasy and final inflation be like we can't afford that and square may even still be loyal to them because they're a japanese company yeah. i don't know or they might I, just I buy could them. see Xbox right. being very mean if they don't win this Activision thing. I could too. Uh, they I, could I probably go after moves. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, Square's going back with so uh, with with Nintendo to bring out uh, Super Mario RPG. So maybe there's a change in ties with Square. Who knows? Yeah. Sorry, Chris, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna say something. Oh no, the yeah, I forgot to mention like probably one of the coolest things in that in Final Fantasy is the base of the Amazon X-ray feature. Oh. Yes, you're absolutely right, Mark. Yeah. I love this. I want this to be in every game. Yeah. Tears of the Kingdom could definitely use this, yes. where you can pause anytime, like an X-ray, Amazon X-ray. Pause. You hit the main button, and it will tell you like this is the land you're in, and these are the main characters. Here's the politics. Oh, yeah. It's almost, yeah. like, it's almost like because it's telling you like this is a hundred hour game. You're gonna forget this stuff, or you're making me <laughs> to this, and it's telling you. I'm like, I want this for every game because quite honestly, there's so much lore in like a Tears of the Kingdom. I yep. don't know about the zone. I who knows? I, 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 <laughs> it's, been, it's been 30, 40 years. I don't know all this stuff. So it would be great to get people more informed and get the lore in a place where it's accessible versus a it's conversation a that's offhand. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Cool. So I think it's, it's very good. It's really well yeah. done. And it's very nice because it does kind of get deep at times, like yeah. a Game of Thrones or The Witcher. And, it's, and it helps you kind of understand like, oh, who are these people? And why are they doing this? And yeah. Yeah, like when I was playing the demo, I was literally just pressing it like every I was like, who's this person? I just pressed the thing and it was like, oh, okay, it tells me that person and like the relationship. So it was great. Cool. Such a cool feature. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, that is what we've been gaming. Uh, we'll go from there, and hopefully, you know, there's going to be no lack of games in the next couple of months, anyways. So, uh, Mark, beat Tears of the Kingdom very soon. Is all I'll say. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to finish it because I need to get into Pikmin Four as soon as that comes okay. out, and I need I I really want to play Pikmin One and Two over again. Yeah. Uh, and 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 yeah, it's um, yeah. I need I need to I need to pause yeah. time and find more time to play <laughs> there's not enough uh and final fantasy 16 after that i'm gonna probably try to get done with here's the kingdom although who knows how because i've got like four hearts and like two bars of stamina <laughs> i just want somebody to farm shrines for me i need a kid mark i really need a kid i guess i could give it to logan he could do it for me like because he's yeah. already done it before but i mean i need someone to do that stuff because that to me that's like the hard work but i need it so i mm-hmm. want to get rid of that and just do the fun stuff so yeah uh let finn work on that for you that'll go well <laughs> definitely yeah 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 yeah. well you'll have no weapons left i'll be broken <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Link will somehow lose the black arm. Like, completely yeah, exactly. Just one falls arm off. Arm the the game. Falls <laughs> off. Yeah. He's eating all the apples. Just He just sits there and eats and eats and eats. <laughs> what happened to all your horses? Oh, they left. <laughs> they left. Yeah. Link ate so many apples and steaks. He's just a 600 pound one arm, <laughs> like, bokoblin running around. Just like, yeah. He'll take you, like, hey, look, daddy, big pony. And it's a Lionel. And you're like, oh, no. Uh-huh. You can't get away from him. You're trapped in a death trap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Um, that is what we've been gaming. Now it's the bonus round. Uh, we hinted about this in um, the Byron Return, but we're talking about collections and specifically the collections we want. Um, we've been blessed to get a lot of collections, but there's still a lot of gaps of collections uh, that might have been released you know consoles ago but now aren't available digitally or physically like we said with the switch with mario so the question is what collections we want and how do we want them meaning do you just want ports like more like the the mario collection do you want up res save states quality of life features documentaries historical ads all of those fun things um that could you know bring more value and and get people up to speed, especially if they didn't grow up with the the, the, the games at the time that may be informing them about what, what this would meant to people. Um, so with that, um, obviously people that are listening to this, if you have examples of what you would love to see, let us know. But with that, we're going to turn to Mark and Chris. So who would like to go first on the collections they would love to have? Oh, Chris, please take it away. Um. There's one I, I know it's never going to happen because I think it's like in some sort of licensing hell or whatnot. But um, the Legacy of Cain series, Ooh. Ooh. I would love for that to be remastered and like be the um, be the, the the lead up to an actual sequel for Soul Reaver and all that stuff. That would be amazing. I, I would be so happy if they ever did that, but. Cool. I don't know. It's probably never going to happen though, because because people are are terrible. But anyway, yeah, that's that. So, that and uh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say. So who even owns that? So Crystal Dynamics, uh, Silicon Knights, they were behind that. We got uh, Legacy of Kane on the PlayStation One, Soul Reaver PlayStation One, Soul Reaver Two. Was there two? I think so. I believe there was. Then there was a l- there was a t- one Legacy of Kane game, uh, a sequel. Okay with Kane. Yes. I think and then so. there was I a game like with both Kane and Raziel. And those are the games I'm aware of. I'm looking. I'm looking. Damn, Todd just like knows a thousand so, yes. knowledge here. <laughs> Blood Omen Legacy of Kane. Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver. Soul Reaver 2. Blood Omen 2. Then Legacy of Kane Defiance. Defiance was a great game. game. Those are the five games that came out. Yes, um, and I assume you cannot play those probably anywhere uh, in a modern sense. Yeah, last what was last one was on an Xbox, so Xbox and, or PS2 or PC. So, and Amy Hennig was behind those games. She she wrote the story for uh, I, I believe the first game. Uh, Dennis Dyack, who is the guy behind Chris, uh, Silicon Knights, who's mm-hmm. kind of crazy. <laughs> um he was behind those games too and they partnered and at this point i'm not sure who owns that but that's one of those things it's like 
I think they are they owned by the um, Embracer Group. Uh, yes. Yep. In May 2022, Embracer Group acquired Legacy of Kame. Hmm. So Embracer Group needs a lot of money. So I could see them getting behind some type of collection remasters or something. I'm hope so. Yeah, I hope if they so. own the whole awesome. series, like realistically, it could be a solid move. That'd be awesome. That would be, yeah. I would be so happy if they did that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just make them playable, modern little. I mean, do you, and then how do you want them? Do you want them just the ports or do you want them to give a little more TLC? I definitely some TLC. I mean, you play those, like, you see those games now that they're, they're definitely aged. Like, you know how, um, like, the Diablo 2 remaster was was supposed to be very good. Like, for the for the old Legacy of King games, do something like that, up-res or, or and all that for the for those series. But, like, for the Soul Reaver stuff, the 3D platforming, like, I feel like you got you to gotta make that look pretty. Like, make it look like the cutscenes back in the... Although, even those cutscenes now look probably not great. But, <laughs> but like, you know, go, go up a little higher in terms of fide- fidelity. And um, yeah, I, I'm, I'd be so down for that. Take my money, embrace your group. That's all I say. How much money? No, just kidding. They'll take any money they can get. <laughs> <laughs> After that, Gollum game didn't do well. Oof. Oh, man, <laughs> Mark, what's your first choice? We can do a round robin if you get more. But Mark, what, what's your what's, what's your I, choice? Yeah, I do have a couple. Um, I'm gonna go with my first like first one. I'm gonna swing for the fences here. Because this is something that I don't think they will ever do, but it would be such a great collection just for the memes alone. Nintendo could make fun of itself. They could embrace some failure. And I think the internet would jump onto it. Release the virtual boy virtual boy collection. Oh. Oh, like an NSO? Or are you talking like just a boxed collection? Either or, whatever you want to do. It's twenty two games or something stupid like that. Like it's it, that that's it. Like that's the entire library of the <laughs> system. Twenty two games total, according to the Wikipedia page I'm looking at right now. Uh, release them. I want this in like all its red, ugly glory. <laughs> I want it to like just be what it is. Um. I don't know. Never mind. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about that. But so I. <laughs> what? Oh, 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 <laughs> what is that? Okay. My goodness. Um, I know. OK, I know someone who has done some stuff and wanted to do a, a remake or a, a kind of a remaster of that for of one of the games for um, the Quest? 3DS. Oh, for 3DS. Oh, okay. Because I think you're like, the, I was thinking you'd go like, somebody wants to do it in Quest. I'm like, that makes a lot of sense. Quest would be great. Uh, no, th- this was back in the day a, a while ago. And someone kind of, I, I can't remember if they, they said they had a functional demo or something. Oh. But it's uh, someone I know that, that you know, does does game stuff that um, it's just like, yeah, the Virtual Boy was was weird and quirky. And I'd love to see like, you know, a little bit of love. So I think it was Wario land that they were working on and, uh, and trying to kind of like, you know, let's do the, um, or the, the Sega remake collection or whatever it was the the, the 3d collection from mm-hmm. Sega. And it was like, Hey, can we like get a license for this and just kind of release it and whatever. Uh, and it, it kind of didn't go anywhere. Um, I hope I'm, I'm sure that that's fine. I was pretty vague. Uh, <laughs> They can't if find I'm you, Mark. Not, they they can't find you. You're in Canada. So hidden. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's it. Uh, so I, I just think, yeah, that like there's such weird games. Like you have, like I said, uh, Wario Land, but then you have like Waterworld, Waterworld. on there. Wow. Uh, virtual okay. Bowling, like Tetris. There's there's like just uh, Mario Tennis. Um, like there's just some weird stuff there that I think you could make, like I said, just a meme worthy collection. Of like, hey, remember our biggest failure? Now we do too. (laughs) And here's the 22 duds that we put out on that thing. And like, I would buy that in a box collection purely, purely for the memes, purely for that Instagram post of like, look at this dumb thing. Like (laughs) that would be it. Take my money, Nintendo. Here's my Instagram picture. I'm happy. Like it's, 
and I'd going a little bit further, I would love them. And this is not Nintendo at all. Like I think if they did do this, it'd just be like, Oh, here's the ROMs dumped on a cartridge. Have a fun day. I would love like a documentary yeah. of how this came to be, how it failed the, the, you know, the hype up were they, and I'd love it like a new documentary that no one's ever seen, like hire some YouTuber or something to do it. Cause there's enough YouTubers that do really good video game stuff, but you know, get someone to, to tell like the, the real story behind it. Like, you know, were they too early? You know, now we see virtual reality take off and like Apple getting into the, the AR space and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, was N- Nintendo just whatever, 30 years too early or <laughs> whatever <laughs> dumb thing that, you know, like, like why, why were some of the choices made? Why was it, you know, like rushed through R and D seemingly because it started giving people headaches. Like, did they not notice that? Like what it's, I, I want to hear the, the history of it and, and really dive into that in a respectful way. Cause I think, I don't think Nintendo sure. one of themselves that much, but I think Nintendo's social accounts could really have some fun with it and just kind of like, who doesn't love red? Here you go. Or like, just, <laughs> they'll have you seeing red. Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Mark. No. Yeah. Oh God. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, question. Uh, would you buy like how they had the mini NES or the mini um, Super Ooh. Nintendo, a mini Virtual Boy like that? Oh, that'd if, be expensive. I I would if it was quality enough and improved enough that it you know didn't wreck my eyesight, didn't give me headaches instantly. Like if it was, I don't know how they do that. I think you could do that with a modern screen that has i mean we're you know, i love virtual reality i love that there's a screen a couple of an inch away from my eyes and it's right, it's, yeah. it's good um could they do a more modern screen with that and just you know whatever 10 times the resolution so you're not you know like it could still look kind of like this thing does right like this the screen in this thing is is whatever is eight times better than what was on the virtual eight boy. times yeah. better than the, what was on yeah. the but like this is this is so much yeah. better than even what was on like this let's say the game boy advance mm-hmm. um but you know the roms and the the emulators are so good that they kind of like do pixel double and it, it looks kind of like how you remember but more crisp and it, mm. it you know um so if they could do something like that I'd be all on board. Mark, I have a solution for you. It's, yeah. It's seeing us right in the face, especially when you put it on your head with cardboard. And then as Labo, <laughs> it should oh, yeah. a Labo. Make a You're stand right. out of cardboard. Have it like with the, the face. It was seeing, it was right in our face and we didn't see it. And it was going to be in red. I like Mark. that. Mark. That's, that's brilliant. Yeah. Todd. Like I'm, I'm, yeah, 100%. How many Labo would they have sold if they did that? <laughs> literally like yeah, 10, 10 million because there's 10 million 10 people more. that would oh, 10, 10, 10 more yes yeah. 10 10 more <laughs> i mean uh, yeah it makes some sure, sense and they could have used idea. like garage the garage what was the garage game builder or the labo game people mm-hmm. could have made games for virtual boy in it yeah but that would have been kind of cool i don't know very very they missed opportunity nintendo I, uh I like you know what those options whether it's it's a classic like full-blown like here's a collector's item right that looks like the original and that or or just have some fun with it yeah make it out of cardboard build it yourself build cool. a game for it like yeah be wacky um yeah. i could see both of those working or i could see it just literally here's a collection for switch yeah uh, enjoy the redness on your 4k tv and so <laughs> it's the one that we you know we already pay for it's like you know not like you're gonna, you know unsubscribe and i mean yeah. all those people that have been holding out for the virtual boy here you go um, all four of you and i guess it's my turn to make my first pick and um it's kind of weird because we're not in this era anymore but there were so many awesome sport arcade games and they largely, I think they have like, you have to buy those like arcade one up systems now to play, get like arc, you know, NFL Blitz. There was what NHL hits. Uh, there was a MLB game, NBA Jam. Um, and what am I also am I missing? There was a, uh, there's a, been a bunch of them. But I mean, mm-hmm. literally, that's a bygone era. I mean, you do get things like uh, Blood Hockey is a, is a new game, which we liked a lot. Uh, so they're getting some forms of those, but we aren't getting like, um, even like NFL street 
NBA Street, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, all those games. I want those back. I mean, I heard Colin Kaepernick is getting like an arcade football game, but it's like not licensed because the NFL <laughs> wants something yeah. to do with them, which is sad. <laughs> but I want a collection of those games, and I don't know how they do it. That's why I own my my Xbox 360, so I can play NBA uh, NFL Blitz. And those games were so big at the time. NBA, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, they had NBA. What was that game? The series that was on the Switch for a couple of years. NBA Jam. Well, no, it was after that. Was it Playground? Not Playground. Was it Playground? Yeah, NBA Playground. That sounds right. It just never captured the imagination. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, everybody that NBA Jam feel right. Yeah, everybody wants to be like the the code with like uh, Bill Clinton, right? <laughs> they want the big head mode. They want that stuff. Or they want to play NBA Street with like Mario going against, I don't know, who's in the NBA at the time. Kobe, maybe. I mean, we mm-hmm. want those games. Even like even like the stupid, if they make it like just an all sports compilation, put in um, what was the snowboarding game um, that was big. Oh, SSX? SSX? Yes. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, those games were amazing, and that's just the PlayStation Two, like Xbox yeah. era, GameCube era, and that's it's what like the EA was doing like some great sports games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I mean, Fight it's just Night, sh- remember Fight Night? Oh, oh Fight God. Night was amazing, and those remember the Xbox 360 Fight Night where they showed the guy's hand going into his face and his like, <laughs> cheek <laughs> deforming so and melting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I want that. Um, and I don't know if they could do it, like bring in like the announcers of those games. Cause that was always one of the best parts. Like, you know, mm-hmm. boom, shakalaka and have them kind of give a documentary about it, how they came up with this. How did it happen? How to get the rights? Who did, the, how did they choose the, the characters? Because Michael Jordan wasn't in those games. Michael Jordan just didn't show up. He, he doesn't want to do that. He makes NBA. Mike, was it Michael Jordan and then Windy City? He threw a basketball at people. That was like the extent of his what? gaming. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> or Charles Barkley shut up and shut up and jam or whatever it was. <laughs> Griffey oh. Jr.'s major, major League Baseball, where he's the only real person in the entire game. <laughs> exactly. You know, oh, here's you know, because I I mean, obviously we've got like techno technical things like, but I really want a cool sports arcade collection. And I would love it if it was just like because I think Midway did most of those games. So just yeah. whoever owns Midway, who know I don't know who owns Midway at this point, but just buy Midway, Xbox buy Midway. I don't know. I mean, who cares? <laughs> Embracer Group actually, they probably own them at this yeah. point. They own everybody else. Yeah. Um, and I just want that, and I just want it to be fun. Um, and if there was a way to like update rosters, that would be even better. But I know that's probably not going to happen. But you know what? Rather than that. Put in like serial mascot characters as the playable characters. I'd be happy. Tony the Tiger taking down Lucky the Leprechaun. I'm all in. That would be amazing. Like your Grimace arcade, Mark. Uh, Mark, did you see the the Grimace the Grimace cart box somebody made for the Game Boy Color for the Grimace game? No. I tagged you on it on Twitter. Check it out. It's oh, great. shoot. I haven't, I haven't been checking Twitter since Threads. I know. You've been on Threads. Um, yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. I'll yes. Check, I know. I'll check Twitter. It's funny. Yeah. yeah it's, it's pretty funny. They made an actual Game Boy Color box. For the game so so that's what i want um and i would like to say i want all the bells and whistles um i don't care if it gets updated graphically wise because that's kind of fun at the era everything's blocky and pixely i'm cool with that i just want it to be able to play in a modern lens cool i like that answer chris Great. back to you do you have another one um i would love a a collection of the Beautiful Joe series. Yes. So remind me which games, because I played the first one, but I know there was more than that. There's uh, apparently there was four games. I didn't realize that. There's Beautiful Beautiful Joe, Beautiful Joe 2, and then there's Beautiful Joe, Red Hot Rumble, and Double Trouble. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know if that's if those actually ever came out, but it says they did. Wasn't one of them uh, for the 3DS or the, the DS? One, the the last Double Trouble was for a DS. Okay. So that was part of like what Capcom's. What was it? Was like all those games Capcom made for the GameCube. It was like they're a big thing. Beautiful Joe, yeah. and Dino Crisis, or whatever three yeah. or whatever. Oh yeah, I love Beautiful like, Joe. So good. But like be able to, yeah. But to be able to do that for, you know, for the more modern consoles and stuff like that. Oh, like it looks so. I I I mean, it looked good for the time, yeah. and then to. For them to like upres this and like do some like crazy stuff like oh, I I'd love to see that again. I'd love to see that. That'd be amazing. 
it's does Capcom own those or is it like platinum or clover or clover was the one that developed it i think capcom owns it but yeah maybe capcom i don't know i don't know make it happen capcom, capcom. capcom's too busy making resident evil 4 for like the 400th time though or <laughs> so primal with dinosaurs dropping from clouds and you have to kill yeah. them it's like, come yeah. on it's so weird. Crazy. Yeah, they, they ignore certain franchises. Like they said, I, at their investor call, someone actually brought up Mega Man. Like, hey, Capcom, are you going to ignore Mega Man still? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Bring back Mega Man. Yeah. Hey, after the success of, uh, you know, the Mario movie, the Sonic movie, all this nostalgia, that yeah. you know, all these other companies are making, uh, you know, money hand over fist. You guys going to bring back your super popular mascot from the exact same era? All right. Who? Who's, ha- who's had, mul- I mean, how many successes has he had? I think that even that one collection that just, oh, talking about collections, that, that, uh, was it the Mega Man? Um, what's that series that was, um, on the GBA that was really popular? The Battle, Battle Network. Yeah, that collection came out and it sold like a million copies. I mean, really? talk about like, you know, there's an audience for Mega Man and, you know, yep. come back, make them happy. Like someone said, basically just make a, uh, Jack and uh, not a Jack and Dexter, a Ratchet and Clank style game with Mega Man. That would be amazing. Yeah. All right, Mark. Round two. I'm trying to decide between two because I don't know if we're going to have a round three. So, you know what? Both of mine are games that are inspired by what I've been playing recently. I'd love either a Pokemon collection or a Zelda collection. Mm-hmm. Uh, for both, I'm going base. 3d games so for pokemon it'd be like red blue yellow gold silver crystal uh and like probably ruby sapphire emerald like just those like the three first entries of the series up to gba um you could maybe throw in fire red leaf green if you wanted to get a little whimsical with it um but since they're essentially the same games as like red and blue then um you know you could really just have like those three generational games um i'd honestly even be happy with like a red blue yellow gold silver crystal collection or even like red blue gold silver like that would just be pretty crazy uh there's some documentaries about it if you want to like find out about the development of that because the development specifically of like gold and silver is absolutely insane Mm. um where like they basically wrote the first game into it and uh oh who was that from nintendo um iwata maybe i think like did that in his free time oh that's right um, i remember that yeah no one else, like no one else knew how to do it and he was just Crazy. like yeah, i can do this i'm just gonna build the first game into this new game even though the first game took up the entire cartridge um and this <laughs> new one's bigger somehow like it, it just like broke the matrix to make this thing like it's just wild um so I'd, I'd love that kind of thing. And then same kind of deal for the Zelda collection. Like Todd said, we've had a Zelda collection before, but it's kind of a mismatch. So of like, you know, like you, you'll get like Wind Waker or something or like, you know, Ocarina mixed with like Link to the Past or something. Like I just want the best of like top down or, you know, early Zelda game. So like Zelda, Zelda 2, Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, DX, uh, Oracle of Ages and Seasons, and then Minish Cap to cap it all off. I think that'd be pretty sick. So you're I'm gonna, gonna skip the, the you're gonna skip those game. DS games, Mark. Uh, the what now? I, I don't <laughs> know. The, what is the but, but the Oracle of Ages, the Oracles of Seasons, the Minish Cap. You'd want all of those. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah the Game yeah. Boy, Game Boy Advance games. Um, I think once you get into and that I skipped the DS on um, on my Pokemon collection too. Um, Cause I just like, I, I don't want the 3d stuff. Like I, I love those collections too. Like you can make, you know, the Pokemon collection two, the Zelda collection two, and start with the DS. That's fine. Um, but for these ones, I want like eight to 16 bit go up to GBA. Got it. So yeah. kind of like the, what is it? Final fantasy. Uh, was it the pixel remasters? They just yeah. did that with square. Um, I mean, even, I mean, and I'll put it to you this mark. What about 2d HD? versions those live alive all of those things where they oh, yeah. said we're gonna really play with the uh the visual style and make it like immersive but still keep the heart of it and i'm like those are amazing when mm-hmm. they do that i just it just blows me away that those games look so cool 
I want I want uh, Pokemon remakes, but I, I don't think this would be a collection because it, it's Pokemon. It. Um, yeah. I want Pokemon <laughs> remakes in um, what's that? Oh shoot, what's that game called? Um, that has like the really cool two D three D art style RPG. Well, there's uh, are you talking Octopath? about like the, like the little, little or... live alive yeah. and Octopath? More, more like Octopath, yeah, yeah. that kind of yeah. yeah that art style for a Pokemon game. Damn, Thanks. do yeah. Pokemon Red and Blue remake in that style? Or gold and silver since I haven't been since when was that remade? DS? Heart Gold and Soul Silver? That was a Probably. DS. Right? Yeah. I have them all, so I just can't remember off the top of my head. But yeah, that wasn't three. <laughs> Mark, years. You, have years. you caught them all? Did they escape? I have are caught them breeding, all. Are they breeding out in the wild? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um yeah, I think either of those collections I'd I'd, I'd really like that. Especially especially Pokemon, because it's so hard to play a lot of those older games Mm -hmm. on new hardware, unless you have something like not super legal, like, like I have. Um, And even when you have something like this, it doesn't integrate to Pokemon home. So that's a pain in the butt. Um, Yeah. You'd almost have to like find a way to break the ROM or something like that. Yeah. So I'd love these collections. If you don't do anything to change it, you don't include documentaries, you don't include anything let me take Pokemon from Pokemon blue and Pokemon red and crystal or whatever. And, and, and fire those to Pokemon home. That is it. Like base collections, take my money. Here you go. Uh, (laughs) That would be fantastic. Very cool. Um, Okay. Uh, Myself, I've probably brought up the series before. I don't know how this would happen, but going back to Capcom, there's a series of games called Anamusha that oh, yeah. started in the PS2 era. Um, they are renowned because they used like actors that you knew, either Japanese or uh, Rene, what John, John what Renault. John Renault. John yeah. Renault, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, for some reason, you were going to take an actor and put them in like, that's a bad idea because now you have to pay that actor. Or if he dies, it is, you have to go with, deal with his, uh, his uh, you know, state. Um, but yeah. those games were awesome. It was, it was Resident Evil with zombies um in a samurai era with demons it was amazing they did do a really crappy like hd remasters what they said they didn't do anything at all with that game it was really disappointing especially considering what they were doing with resident evil um i think you could say with like capcom with a lot of their series like dino i know a lot of people want dino crisis and there's a lot of other uh games that they could go back to but anamusha i think would be fantastic especially after seeing ghost of tsushima and what they did with that and when i saw that new capcom game that they showed at uh i think the xbox showcase where it was like this i'm like oh we're getting anamusha no we're not todd (laughs) just go away i'm like oh slept to the face but i think that could work really well i think it could they could just replace those actors with just generic people and really bring that game up to speed like they did with the re remasters and and mm. i would take like up or simplified versions of those that have quality of life just to play those games again because they had some of the best cut scenes i've ever seen in games and to make those look beautiful up because a lot of the games back in the day actually were done at a higher resolution than they were actually supported um basis the tv technology and what they could do yeah. uh, a lot of nintendo games are like that too it's like they're actually better the assets are so much better than what they could do so it's very easy for them to take those assets so i would say anamusha would love a collection with that i think it would be fantastic and i think it really works with uh capcom so capcom is just I, I think they just have too many things to do and not enough assets to do it with because but of course they're making exoprimal so <laughs> <laughs> i don't know <laughs> Oh well. Um, I want that any- to be your ongoing joke for everything. <laughs> Exoprimal. So, Exoprimal. Yeah, yeah. I love like, it. I, hey, I this game's got pushed back, but you know, Exoprimal still being developed. <laughs> so I just want that to be like a running <laughs> gag for you. For it, it'll be like three years later. What is Todd talking about? What and nobody Ex- remembers that game. <laughs> or it's a yeah. jokes on everyone else. Exoprimal is the biggest game in the world. Around like right. Exoprimal two. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And it was all because of Todd. That's an even better joke. Yeah, you're like, I think- well, look how that's so primal turned out. I don't even know, man. It's, uh, I think, yeah. It's, we're getting like an animated movie. We're getting like uh, all these celebrities. Vin Diesel's in it in the oh, sequel. Of course, Love it. Of course, why not? <laughs> yeah, he's absolutely. in uh, Ark. He's in the new Ark game, right? Ark Survival. As far as we know, that game really probably doesn't even exist, right? 
<laughs> it's actually Fast and Furious back back to the past, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. The riding dinosaurs instead of cars. That's a family. Fast and the Furious Ten Part Three. Right. It's Let's just prehistoric. Back. Yeah. <laughs> um, any seconds or thirds? I guess we're on thirds. Any third courses? I've I've one more real quick, yeah, and that absolutely. is uh, Bushido Blade. That oh, game yeah. needs a freaking remake or remaster. That's like a Souls game before Souls exist. Uh, yeah, I mean one it was still kill. like a fight. Yeah, it was a fighting game, yeah. but like yeah, one hit kill. It was just oh, man, it was such a cool game, and like there's nothing as has done the same thing. I there I remember there was a Steam game that was like somewhat similar but in a different uh it was more it was more like this had a story, right? Like you when you fo- you follow your character and it was just like so awesome like if you get wounded in, in, in like the in one battle, you're still wounded in the next one and it's just, you just kind of keep going through it. Oh, it was, uh, I, I don't know. I want I want that again. I want that again. So that would be Bish- Bushido Blade 1, 2 and Kingo. For the fortune, I guess I don't know. I, one and <laughs> two, know, one and two. Game for collection. One one, one <laughs> it's enough. a game collection of one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, at least one and two. Okay. The rest, but yeah, we'll allow it. Two game collection. Yeah, maybe with some some yeah, or, or and then sneak in a uh, like like a, like a documentary about it too. Absolutely, kind of like a history of that that fighting style. Maybe add in a movie of the uh, uh, of that era with the, mm-hmm. with the, the samurai. That'd yeah. be very cool. My goodness. Well, there we go. I think that is it for the show, folks. If you have a collection in mind, uh, games that you just can't play, but you think that deserve to be played by us in a cool and new way um, on our modern consoles, we'd love to hear about it. Uh, so with that, Chris, thank you for joining us today. Um, we, you know, we're actually short. This is like one of the shortest episodes we've ever done. Oh my goodness! Not wow. because it wasn't good, it is because we we're actually focused, which is <laughs> yeah. good for me. Well, I appreciate you guys having me on because it's always it's always a blast talking about games with you with you fine folks. So, yeah, uh, and hopefully, all of our, our our wishes for these collections come true. We can we can get to play them. So. We just got to pray to Kirby, make it happen. Pray, our, pray to our Kirby, deity sorry. in the sky. <laughs> um, so, Chris, tell people where they can find you around the webs. Yeah, uh, you can find me on Twitter, roaming there every once in a while at TC1H1D. Our, our podcast is on most uh, podcasting platforms. Our uh, we have we post our videos as well on the Quit the Build Network uh, and YouTube.com slash Quit the Build and um, and yeah, there. I think I'm on. Oh yeah, I'm on Threads too. So there's that. <laughs> there's that as well. Uh, at TC1H1D over there as well. And um, yeah, you know, if you want to have a conversation about games or anything geek related, I'm I'm happy to oblige. So thanks again, guys. Appreciate it as always. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Mark. Man. Tell people yeah. where they can find you. Uh, I, as I as I alluded to earlier, I have not checked Twitter in a bit. Uh, I've kind of moved my focus over to Instagram and threads so you can find me, but you can still find me on Twitter and tag me and maybe remind me to look at it like Todd just did. <laughs> uh, anywhere you're looking for me, I'm at the underscore Canardian. So I make it very simple for you to find me everywhere. Very, very cool. And uh, I'm still on Twitter um, working on threads. I am not a very comp complicated man so sometimes I, I struggle with all of the different social medias um but yeah i would love to see people over there i can't even remember what my and and we set up one at secret, secret friends unite as well we're trying to work on that one too on threads as well to get there because as of right now i need to uh, engage with some folks because as of right now i've just got like the main feed of everybody and kim kardashian <laughs> just showed up to the party and i'm like i don't want that um meek mill I, i'm like meek mill sure uh, so i just need a way to because right now threads is threads needs some help with having like a follow tab and they need a way they, they need some help but you know what if 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 we're gonna get like the final battle between elon and zuck and they they both uh, can find a way to you know be better. Hopefully, this will, this is what Threads will achieve in the social media network. But yeah, T Oxtra is I believe both my places. You can find me there. Um, and once again, check out our Patreon, Seek French Unite, uh, Patreon.com/slash Seek French Unite. Check it out. Uh, check it out for your trial and enjoy the stuff we're doing. 
We're having a lot of fun there. And I'm also putting out um, our Patreon stuff that we release on our website as well. So you can check it out there at secretfrenchunite.com. So that is it for our show. Hopefully you enjoyed the, the journey. And uh, if we did not get to your comment today, uh, which Famous Seamus, I just posted, I looked, he just posted, um, you know, thank you, Famous. Uh, we'll get to you uh, on the next episode. So thank you, Chris. Thank you, Mark. And remember, folks, it's always better to game together. This podcast is part of the Secret Friends Unite podcasting network. Visit secretfriendsunite.com for more great shows, articles, news, reviews, and more. Secret Friends Unite podcasts are available on Apple, Google, Spotify, and other podcast services around the world. If you'd like to be part of the conversation, you can join us on Facebook or our new Discord server, or follow at Secret Friends U on Twitter. Please subscribe to Secret Friends Unite on YouTube and visit our merch store at tpublic.com. Just search Secret Friends Unite. Thanks for listening.